Okay, part three of the sprint planning with GitHub projects demos. At the end of the last demo, we had our PBI issues, the requirements added into the sprint, and we created task sub issues for each of those requirements, basically describing how we were going to actually get those requirements done, turn them into real software. But the key thing we ended up with was that our task sub issues had gone missing. In this part of the demo, I'll show you where those sub issues went, and we'll create some views to help keep stuff organized so you don't lose anything. One of the very first things you'll probably notice is that our sub issues are absolutely nowhere to be found. This is something that's in the product right now that I don't love. When you're creating sub issues like we just did, you can add a sub issue and set the issue type and the project, but you don't currently have an option for setting the iteration. So what you end up with is a slightly confusing situation like this here. The sub issues have kind of gotten lost. The solution that I've come up with is to create a separate view. I'm going to create a new table view. And now through this view, all the sub issues that we created are visible in the project. But this still isn't exactly ideal because this is a combination of all the issues in our entire project, regardless of what their issue type is. So it's kind of showing us too much stuff. The answer is to add a filter to this view. And one of the available filter types is, well, filter on type, filter on issue type. To get this menu, you just type the word type followed by a colon. That brings up a list of available issue types. Then just scroll down. And here's the type for task. Select that filter on type equals task, and now here's our filtered list. This is a pretty good start, but there are still some customizations I'd like to make. First, I'd like to be able to see the parent issue. And then next, the iteration value. Okay, so those are the fields we're adding, so we've got parent issue and iteration. All right, so there are the new fields, and I probably should rename this view to be something a little bit more descriptive, so let's rename this to be sub-issues. Getting closer, but I'm going to change the column order to be title, parent issue, assignees, and iteration, and then save the changes. And now we have a good view of the tasks in our project along with their parent issues. Plus, we can see the iterations for each of them. Currently, the iteration isn't set for any of them. We want the iteration to be iteration 3. So let's set that value. And then I'll do the fill down trick to set the iteration value for the remaining items. Now we've completed the basic plan for the create new blog post PBI and the five tasks that the team thinks they'll need to do to complete it. But one of the big things that's missing is the time estimate for these issues. That's another column that would be nice to have. So let's add that estimate field too. Select that column and then rearrange the field columns so they're in a good order. And then save those changes. The estimate values for PBIs, or user stories, or whatever you call the requirements, the estimate values are probably going to be story point values. And those values are probably going to be from the Fibonacci sequence. Tasks are usually estimated in hours, as in how many hours will it take to complete this task, or how many hours are remaining. Let's assume that your team has discussed these hour estimates and has come up with a bunch of values. I'm going to just quickly plug them in here. Now all the tasks have estimates. Let's go back to the next sprint view and see what's up. We can now see all the PBIs that we pulled into this sprint along with the task sub issues. Remember, we're still in the middle of sprint planning and there's still more planning work to do, but I've got to say that this view is looking a little jumbled. I'm a little lost. As you can probably guess, I'm about to say that we can fix this by adjusting our view. One of the options is the slice by value. Currently, this is set to none, but one of the options is to slice by issue type. When we add that type slice option, we get this menu bar on the left. This is basically a way to quickly change what we're looking at. It also tells us the number of items of each type, five tasks and four user stories. Remember, product backlog items, PBIs, and user stories are all basically the same thing. If we click on task, we see just the tasks. I'm not sure if this is a view style that I'd use a lot, but one thing that's interesting is that it's changed the estimate total number. It's now totaling up the estimates to show us the total number of hours for all the tasks in the sprint. Knowing the total number of hours, the total amount of remaining work in your sprint for the task that you've created so far, knowing what that total is can be really helpful during sprint planning because it can help tell you or give you an indication about when you might have too much stuff in your sprint. Next, 
let's change the slice value to be user story. Once again, this changes the filter. So all we're seeing now is the list of PBIs, also known as user stories, in this sprint that we're planning. The estimate total has changed again. This time, it's showing us the total number of story points for all these PBIs, and that total is 26. One of the things that commonly happens in sprint planning is changing the relative priority of the requirements in the sprint. If you need to make those changes, all you need to do is just drag the cards into the order that you want. Continuing with sprint planning, let's add some sub-issues, some tasks, for the next PBI. Here are the details for this next requirement. And let's say that the team, once again, has already thought up their list of tasks. Let's create some sub-issues for those tasks. First, I'll set the issue type to task, and then I'll set the project to be our project. Now that I have those set, I'll input a title and then add a description. A quick little tweak to the description text and then click the Create button. And I still have more tasks to create. And I just realized that I hadn't clicked the Create More checkbox on the previous screen. So when I go to create my next sub-issue task, I have to reselect the issue type and project values. When you're doing this kind of data entry task, you'll quickly train yourself to check this Create More Sub-Issues checkbox. Through the magic of video editing, I'm going to quickly add the sub-tasks for this PBI. And here they are. And now we're back on the list of user stories in the sprint that we're planning. As you can guess, those task sub-issues that I just created aren't going to show up because there's no iteration set on them. So I'll come over to the sub-issues view. And yes, as suspected, no iteration value. Let's do the fill down trick. Grab that little plus sign icon thingy and drag it down. And now those tasks are set to iteration 3, like we want. While we're here, let's add some hour estimates to these items. Remember, I'm just pulling these values out of the sky. In real life, in a real, actual sprint planning meeting, hopefully you and your team will have a meaningful discussion about what these estimates should be. Meanwhile, back on the next sprint view tab, let's change the slice back to slice by task. And once again, our total estimate value is showing us how many hours of task-based work we think we have in this sprint, 88 total hours. Flipping this view back over to Slice by User Story, we can see all the requirements in the sprint. Another super common thing that can happen during sprint planning is that the team realizes that they need to add a completely new PBI to the sprint. To handle that scenario, there are these little add item buttons at the bottom of each column. And when you click on that, you get this input box at the bottom that lets you create new items. Let's say that the thing that we've noticed is that we really need an automated build for our project. So I'll type in automated build using GitHub Actions. And when I click the Enter button to create that item, I get this warning message. And that message says, the new item is hidden by this view's filters. This makes sense because there are probably a bunch of attributes that didn't automatically get set. Thankfully, it gives us a link to open the item so we can fix that. Click on that link and it opens up the item. The number one thing that I notice here is that the item we created was created as a draft issue. Remember, a draft issue is basically just a little note reminding you about this thing. It's not real yet. Let's make it real. Come over to the Convert to Issue button and click it. That prompts us for which repo we want to create this issue in. It's got the Issues repo right here at the top, so I'll choose that. That changes this over to be a real live issue that's attached to our project. And while I'm here, I'm going to make sure to set the issue type value to be user story so that it shows up with our other requirements. Since we created it from that iteration view, it's already got the right iteration value set. So that's kind of nice. Let's set the estimate value, the story point value, to be five story points. Again, make sure that you're discussing these estimates with your team rather than just making up numbers. I'll quickly add a description to this item. And then I'll add a task sub-issue for this item. Populate the details like the task, the description, the title, all that kind of stuff. And that pretty much wraps it up for this. And we can go ahead and close it. But we haven't added an estimate for that work yet. Let's open up that task for implementing that GitHub Actions pipeline. And let's say that we discuss this as a team and decide that, for whatever reason, it's quite a bit of work and we give it an estimate of 80 hours. Back on our next sprint view, we've got an updated total of 168 hours for this sprint. There are gasps of horror and surprise by this total. Wow, that's starting to look like quite a bit of work in front of us for this sprint. 
The team discusses this a bit and talks it over with the product owner and they decide that they have too much work in the sprint. So they flip the slice value on this view back to user story so they can see all the PBIs that they've selected for the sprint. The team discusses this a bit and comes to the conclusion that these two requirements, these two PBIs, they don't have a chance of getting these done in this sprint. And the team's decision is to kick these items back to the product backlog. They're not saying we'll do it in sprint four or saying when they'll do it. They just are putting it back on the main product backlog. To make this happen, to remove these PBIs from this sprint, you just have to change the iteration. Open the details for the PBI, come over to iteration, and then just uncheck the iteration. Basically, you clear the value by selecting the same iteration again. So that's removed this PBI from the sprint. Let's do the next one. Open the details, go to iteration, and change the iteration back to no value. All right, so those two PBIs are back on the backlog, and the team looks at this and says, hey, this is probably what our sprint is gonna look like. They take another pass through it. They say, how do we feel about it? Feeling pretty good. And with that, sprint planning is over and they can go off and start working on their stuff. That also wraps up this series of demos on doing the sprint planning meeting using GitHub projects. Starting with the next video, we'll pivot to more of the day-to-day -day delivery activities like the daily scrum meeting, plus viewing and tracking status of work within the sprint. If you like this video, please consider clicking like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.